All right, siamo live. Super, super. Questo lo adoro. Ciao Chiara, grazie di essere venuta. Ciao Serenella. Ciao ragazzi, grazie mille a tutti di essere venuti. So che è un po' tardi in Italia. Um, Kaila verrà connessa tra poco. E, um, da, lei abita in California, quindi per lei sono solo l'una. E ha appena finito la scuola, quindi per quello che abbiamo dovuto mettere l'orario un pochettino più tardi del solito. Vi apprezzo e cioè, vi, vi ringrazio per um, di essere stati con noi lo stesso, anche se è un po' più tardi dal solito. E come state oggi? Spero che state benissimo, spero che state passando una... avete passato una bella giornata. Cosa avete fatto? Qualche verticale in casa? Spero, spero di sì. Um, ragazzi, oggi verrà connesso con noi Kyla Ross. Per quelli di voi che non conoscete Kyla... Vi do una breve spiegazione, anche se è difficile, perché questa ragazza ha fatto tantissimo um, nel, nella sua vita da ginnasta e non solo. E eccola qui, che con essa ora, aspetta che li chiamo. E ci siamo. How are you? Is my connection bad? Oh, look at that beautiful sky behind you. Oh my gosh. We're all so jealous right now. I know. Luckily, the weather's been pretty nice in SoCal. It hasn't been that warm, but it's been, it hasn't been raining or anything, which is nice. Oh, that's so nice. It's so nice to see you getting some fresh air. How was school? Good. Yeah, this was our first week. So since we're on the quarter system, um, we had finals two weeks ago, and then last week was spring break. So now we're just getting used to doing school online. So yeah. basically yeah. it's just like instruction this week, just like learning how to use like the online um, video chats and stuff like that. Right, right. Getting used to it. Big adjustment, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining. I'm so, so, so happy and we're all honored to have you on our live today. And people are so excited. I have so many questions um, that have been asked through Instagram and um, you have so many Italian fans. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, yeah, I've been to Italy like seven times. I think out of all the countries, that's the one I've been to the most. So Aww, definitely sending so love cute. to Italy. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. We, we have a lot of people who have, oh my gosh, I met her at Cheslo. She's my favorite gymnast ever. Aww. And they're really excited. So I'm going to grab my list of questions from them too, because I have a few things that I'd like to ask you. And then I'd like to also ask some of their questions because they're really good, actually. They're great questions. People are really excited to get to know you a little bit today. So before I connected you, I was giving a brief, brief explanation in um, Italian. And I'm going to try and translate as best I can, as precisely as I can, with what we're talking about, just so that all of the Italians watching this live understand what we're talking about, what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, come dicevo, ragazzi, Kaila... Um, e no, oltre tutti i successi che ha avuto sia nella ginnastica che fuori dalla ginnastica, quello che è il più importante che conosciamo di più è quello degli Olimpiadi nel 2012 a Londra, dove ha preso la medaglia d'oro con la squadra. E adesso gareggia per UCLA, voi lo conoscete come UCLA. E ne sai, ne sei UCLA. It's really cute. <laughs> I know, so you'll say that in, in English. <laughs> oh, really? It's a funny way to say it. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I think it's cute. Um, quello che vorrei dirvi però, che oltre essendo cioè, una ginnasta con ovviamente tantissimi successo uh, nel suo sport, um, quello che apprezzo di più di Kyla è che è una persona davvero 
davvero gentile ed è umile ed è amichevole e positiva, è veramente una bellissima persona. Um, so I'm just explaining, you know, among all of your amazing successes, um, the one that we obviously know the most is the gold medal at the Olympics um, 2012. Um, but beyond that, what I wanted to share with them is how much I appreciate you as a person, um, not just a gymnast, obviously such a role model in the gymnastics world, but also as a person because you are just so kind and just friendly <laughs> and humble. I mean, you have accomplished so much and you're just so humble and just friendly and positive and such a leader in our community and not just gymnastics, but also beyond gymnastics. So, um, we met last year at camp, two camps, actually, at Betty's. Betty, if you're watching, hello. We love you. Siamo conosciuti l'anno scorso a un collegiale, due collegiali che abbiamo fatto insieme qui negli Stati Uniti. Okay, so first off, everyone would like to know, how old are you, Kyla? <laughs> I am 23 years old. 23 years old? Yeah. And uh, right now, where are you? Are you still on yeah, campus? So, are you home? Yeah, I just moved uh, back home. And so since I started college, I, hadn't mo I haven't lived at home. So um, definitely just moved all my stuff back and getting used to being around the house. Um, but it's really nice having my whole family together because we haven't been together in years because um, my sister lives in Hawaii. So she's back home um, for a bit, too. Wow, that is so good. I'm happy for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kyla ha 23 anni, ragazzi, e da quando ho iniziato college non ha vissuto a casa. E adesso è tornata a casa ed è molto contenta perché anche sua sorella è a casa, che vive in, nelle Hawaii, che bello. E sono tutti a casa per la prima volta in tanto tempo e si sta abituando un attimo a, a come stare a casa con tutti e sono molto contenta che lei sta con la famiglia. I'm really happy that you're with your family right now. That's awesome. Yeah. So one of the questions that I really liked was from a girl named Lisa. She asked, have you ever had any fears in gymnastics and how did you get over them? Se hai mai avuto qualche paura? Yeah. Per e come fatto a superarla. Yeah, I think it's pr it's pretty common for a lot of gymnasts to have maybe it's like one certain skill or maybe it's an event. I think um gymnastics is such a unique sport where it's like very like you every day that you go in the gym you you are facing your fears. So for me, um I actually had a fear of ba of tumbling backwards and um on I had it on floor and on beam and uh, every time I would go up and stand there, especially on beam for a back handspring, I would be so nervous and it would take me forever to go for it or I would just, I would balk and not go for it. So, uh, for me, wow. I, had, yeah, I had it for years and it was crazy. really hard. Um, and it took me a while to overcome, but for me, what helped was, uh, doing mental imagery or visualizing myself doing it before I would actually go. Um, and doing a, and doing a lot of it on on the floor, um, practicing mm -hmm. that muscle memory on the floor. So when I would get get up on the high beam, I wouldn't have as much of a fear. Um, right. And then just like a lot of positive self talk, um, giving myself certain keywords or um, cues that would help me um, feel at ease before I would go for each skill. I love that. Um, okay, so that's interesting. I um had the exact same fear on back handsprings actually and one of the things that I did too was visualization so I totally love that and support that 100% um I'm gonna translate really quick your response yeah so una delle cose che lei ha avuto paura da fare in palestra è stato il flip che indietro trave ma qua qualsiasi cosa che andava indietro in ginnastica e dice che è molto comune, molto normale per le ginnaste per avere le paure in questo sport perché ogni giorno stiamo affrontando le nostre paure e ha detto che una delle cose che gli ha aiutato un sacco ad, a superare questo, questo flick in trave era per fare la visualizzazione in cui si immaginava fare l'elemento e poi tanto per terra quindi facevo un passo indietro andavo per terra, facevo tanto per la memoria muscolare, ok? Così quando saliva poi sulla trave si sentiva più tranquilla. 
Un'altra cosa che hai detto molto importante è come si parla qui. Quindi um, dicendo cose positive a se stessa per tranquillizzarsi e, e sentire più convinta per partire. Ok, love that response. That's beautiful, Kyla. Um, so there is this really cute fan of yours. I would like to bring attention to her. Her name is Sarah. She must have left 20 comments because I told oh, that story. That's so cute. That's yeah. So And um, they miss you in Italy. They miss seeing you. And uh, yes, yeah, so well, hopefully I'll be able to go back soon. Maybe I'll make an appearance at, at just solo me. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You could go, even just. I mean, even if you decide that you don't want to compete, just come and cheer everyone on. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you there. That'd be fun. But um, okay, here are her comments. So first, she says, "I love her so much." And then she said, um, she is my all caps, all time favorite gymnast. I saw her in Jeslo 2015 and I've never been able to take a picture with her. She's so upset about this. She's never been able to take a picture with her. Oh. <laughs> But she said that she saw you and she says, please come back to Italy. Um, Sara would like to know. What was your all-time favorite gymnastics meet? Um, I mean, that's a hard one because I really enjoy just traveling to, the, to, to the, all the different countries um, through gymnastics. So I think each, each competition was pretty unique and um, I really enjoyed all my experiences. So um, I would say I love going to Italy each year. I think, um, I feel like we almost like the US, we almost treated it as one of just like our normal annual competition just because it, it, um, it became yeah, pretty traditional for you guys huh? yeah so for me it was kind of just like one of those meets where um like each year to to get more experience and to go international and compete against all the countries I really enjoyed that um and we got to go to Venice each year and one year we even got to go to Rome so um, wow that's yeah, just awesome. experiences like that is something that uh I'm so grateful that Through gymnastics, I was able to go to many different countries and see different cultures um, throughout the whole time. Beautiful. Okay, so um, Kyla said, è difficile scegliere perché la ginnastica le ha portato in così tanti diversi paesi nel mondo. È bellissimo che nella ginnastica ha potuto vedere altri paesi, altre culture. E ogni gara è stata unica, dice, è difficile scegliere perché a lei piace moltissimo gareggiare. E una delle sue preferite è l'Italia, è andata lì, um, how many times did you go to Italy? Seven, I think? Seven uh, times. Six or seven, volte yeah. Volte è dietro. <laughs> e dice che questa gara è diventata tipo tradizione per la squadra americana perché andavano quasi ogni anno. E... Um, e quindi ero, ero sempre molto contenta per tornare con la squadra, le sue amiche di, di, di squadra. E una volta sono andate anche a, a Roma per fare un giro. È stata a Venezia, eh, però mh, soprattutto c'è cioè, girare in generale, vedere le diverse culture. Ehm, lei adora questo aspetto. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ok, let's see here. What is it like? Now, this is a good question because um, in Italy, there isn't, um, there aren't any college competitions. There's not an NCAA, anything like that. So it's really cool for people to watch like meets online, um, see what it's like, like the college lifestyle and stuff. And we would like to know what is it like to train in college? Come è per allenarsi in college? Chiara Gasperetti ha chiesto questa domanda. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a really cool experience, and I, I wish other countries maybe someday would have, like, college athletics. I think it's something that I think a lot of people should get to experience. And so uh, for us, it just depends on the time of the year. So in preseason um, or, like, in the summers, If we do train, um, we only are allowed to train eight hours a week. And so for us, that's like our out of season. And so we're usually conditioning more, um, doing a lot of strength. And then 
um, only maybe like one or two, like at most two hours of gymnastics um, a day. And so that's just mostly to keep the summer's more for us to like either learn new skills um, or just stay in shape. And then when preseason starts in September, that's when we train 20 hours a week. So we're usually training about four hours um, a day, five days a week. And okay. that's um, so from September to December, that's when we're putting our routines together, figuring out which skills work best for us um, and just getting ready for season. And then in January to April is when we compete and we compete every single weekend for 14 weeks. Um, so I, that oh, was like the my biggest gosh. or the hardest part of the transition was just competing that much. Um, so that's, I think just competing that, that much. I think that's why our routines are a little bit shorter. Um, and maybe some of our skills aren't as difficult in the lead is just because we have the sheer amount that we're competing is a lot of pounding on our bodies. So, right, um, that makes sense. and we need to stay healthy for that long. And so, uh -huh. um, honestly during season when we compete, uh, every weekend, we usually only train, uh, at max three times a week. Um, just yeah. cause we're, we have so much, we're competing every weekend. So we kind of get in the groove and then you don't need as much training. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing school on top of all of that. Yes. Yeah. So for our team at UCLA, we train in the morning. So we like during the, uh, during September to December, we train, um, and during season we train at 8 AM and then usually done by noon. And then okay. we take classes after that. So okay. for us, we, um, at UCLA, we usually take, uh, student athletes usually take three classes. And so, um, that's about 15 units. And so some of us have class every day. Some people only have class two or three days a week. Um, just depends on which classes you're taking. But, um, yeah, I, it's kind of tiring. I think just, I was, I was not used to training in the morning in, in club gymnastics. So, I had to really? get used to training in the morning. And did then, you do public schooling? Yeah. So I, did, I it was kind there. of flipped. I did public school in the morning and then I would go to practice after. So um, it was kind of different doing practice in the morning and then um, yeah. doing school after. Yeah. Which is interesting. That's very unique. You know, um, I think it's a challenge and amazing that you were able to train at such a high level and still be able to go to public schooling. I think that's, that's, that's really awesome and inspirational for a lot of gymnasts. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm going to translate real quick. So la, la vita di college è molto diversa di quello che era abituata a fare. Um, quando si allenava in elite, lei si allenava dopo la scuola, quindi al pomeriggio, perché una cosa bellissima di Kyla è che lei è riuscita a fare per tutto il tempo della sua carriera elite, che sarebbe a livello internazionale, ragazzi, uh, lei è riuscita a tenere l'orario di scuola pubblica. Quindi cioè, spesso le ginnaste vanno in scuole private per poter dedicare più ore, avere un orario diverso con la ginnastica, invece lei è riuscita a tenere sempre l'orario della scuola pubblica e con la vita sociale nella sua vita mentre si allenava il pomeriggio. Adesso però invece a college si allenano alla mattina. Hanno un limite durante l'estate di solo... How many hours did you say in summer? In the summer we only train about um, like 10, 8 to 10 hours a week. 8 to 10 hours, that's incredible. Yeah, pretty short, yeah. Yeah, uh, in estate per lei si allenano solo 8 a 10 ore quindi, a settimana, quindi davvero um, pochi rispetto a quello che era abituata a fare. Um, quindi sarebbe il loro tempo di un po' vacanza, sai, fanno un po' di meno. E invece durante la stagione si allenano 20 ore a settimana. Quindi comunque, like 20 hours is, in, you know, it's a lot, but what, from what you were used to, um, I'm sure it was yeah. less. Yeah, I know that's the challenge, I think, getting to college is like, for a lot of for a lot of sports, like 20 hours is sufficient. But for gymnastics, it's like girls are used to training at least 30 hours, especially if you're uh, a higher level at minimum. Yeah, and absolutely. when I did a, a lead, I would train almost I would train almost 40 hours a week. And so going down to 20, I think you really have to be um, very diligent, like with your time and make sure that you're you're on task and you're getting your assignment done. Um, so it definitely was a new challenge going to college is cutting down on hours. 
Yeah, wow. Um, so, in college i ragazzi fanno quasi la metà di ore che lei faceva quando si allenava in lit. Um, questo perché? Uno, perché fanno anche la scuola. Uh, la scuola in cu di cui va che Kyla è molto prestigiosa anche, quindi deve essere molto dedicata anche a quello. E, um, fanno le competizioni ogni weekend per 14 settimane di seguito. Tantissime co uh, competizioni e meno ore in palestra. Um, per lei è stato un cambiamento difficile perché quando sei abituato, sai, in qualsiasi dello sport 20 ore sono giusti, bastano. Però quando um, fai la ginnastica 20 ore sembrano poche, specialmente quando ti stai allenando per un livello molto alto. E quindi per lei questo è stato uno dei cambiamenti più difficili per allenarsi, stare sempre concentrata e rimanere in forma con meno ore in palestra. Ok. Thank you, love that. Um, we have a question that a lot of people have been asking, and I'm, I'm sure you've been talking about this a lot, so we can just lightly touch on it. Um, but I have, I have, must have 30 questions asking, what are your feelings regarding your season being cut short? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot of interviews lately, and uh, um, a lot of people have been asking just what it's been like um, from especially not only co like college gymnast, but being a senior and um, not only is my season over, but my gymnastics career. So um, at first it was really sad just to know that I didn't get the ending that I was yeah. hoping for. And just being in college those four years, um, I think just looking to get like, we have a our last home meet is like when we have a big, senior night celebration and, yeah. and our families get to come on the floor and they give us um like they just honor us and show a video and stuff in front of all the fans and um it's kind of just like the last moment we get to thank the fans for just supporting us the four years so it was hard to not have that senior me and so um you kind of get that closure but I think just looking at the situation it's not just um us it's happening to, to athletes all over the world just um having to have their seasons cut short and then just like the everyday life people are losing their jobs and just um some people are not getting paid and stuff so it's just hard to see but I think um just still being grateful that I was able to still do gymnastics all these years and finish strong and healthy um is how I've been looking at it yeah that's so positive you're always so positive about about any situation um <laughs> Will you guys still, you think you'll probably still have a party in senior night? In um, hopefully in the future. Um, I mean, I, my family still, um, like, it got canceled. Our senior meet in season got canceled the week of our senior meet, like, right before, just a few days wow. prior. So my family, a lot of my family had already flown out and had, had drove um, to L.A. So we still kind of had a little get-together with my family um, at my parents' house and and got to celebrate a little bit but hopefully in the future um we'll still be able to have like a celebration with all our fans once like the strict um social distancing rules are um absolutely are you guys out. deserve it yeah. absolutely and i'm sure the fans are anxious to do something with you guys too yeah. and support you as much as they can and, and just celebrate with you guys such a beautiful season and such a beautiful college experience that you've had um i'm going to translate to our italian viewers So, vi ho chiesto cosa pensa e come si sente della sua stagione che è stata praticamente tagliata a metà. Per Kyla questo è stato un anno molto importante, ragazzi, perché questo non è il suo, suo ultimo anno di college, ma l'ultimo anno di gara. E nella sua carriera questa era la stagione um, più importante, forse, perché è stata la chiusura di questo bellissimo capitolo nella sua vita, bellissima carriera di ginnastica. Um, per lei quest'ultima gara è stata cancellata tre giorni prima ed era molto contenta per um, cioè non vedere l'ora di fare una festa con tutti i fan, ringraziare i fan per tutto il supporto che hanno dato sempre alla squadra, lì a UCLA e a lei anche personalmente l'hanno seguita con tutti i dieci perfetti che ha ricevuto in gara. Um, lei però dice che anche se è triste che 
non ha avuto il percorso che pensava, che immaginava prima di tutto questo, um, è molto positiva. Dice che spera di almeno avere una festa o qualcosa nel futuro con i fan, um, fanno un grande evento nello, nello stadio dove danno onore a tutti i ragazzi che hanno gareggiato e um, con tutti i fan intorno. E si spera che faranno una festa, pensa che lo faranno lo stesso. Pensa anche che um, non è solo lei, sono tanti atleti che stanno superando questo periodo e anche persone che non hanno lavoro, quindi non è solo lei e spero che tutto si risolve molto presto. All right, that was very positive, Kyla. Um, I think that it gives a lot of inspiration to people who are kind of like put down, especially in Italy, you know, they've been in the house for three or four weeks now. And so to hear um, a positive outlook and attitude on the situation um, is, is really wonderful. So yeah. thank you for bringing your light <laughs> to this live. Um, I just have a few more questions for you. <laughs> Someone asked, what street does she live on? Let's not. <laughs> They're going to come find you in California. <laughs> um, Francesca says, I love you so much, Kyla. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what is your favorite Italian food? Ooh, I would say, I would say pizza. Um, Good choice. And I like, choice. I like the thin crust. Also, my dad. I don't even know. Are calzones Italian or was that American? American thing? No, it is. It is. <laughs> okay. It's a thing. <laughs> okay. You guys. I love yeah, my that. dad. My dad made homemade um, calzones. Um, wow, recently. they were really nice. good. Uh, what did he put inside? Um, just pepperoni and like mozzarella cheese and um, ricotta and and like regular pizza sauce. But sometimes he puts Italian sausage, but Um, we didn't have any, so he just put pepperoni. I love that. Il papà di Kyla gli ha fatto i calzoni. Gli ha fatto con il peperoni. Allora, noi diciamo peperoni, ma in realtà tipo è salami. Pepperoni is something that I learned um, <laughs> was not actually Italian. I went asking for a pepperoni pizza in Italy one time. Oh. <laughs> and they brought me a pizza out with a bunch of green peppers on it because pepperoni actually translates to green peppers and I was oh, so no. confused and so let down because I was like my whole life I've known <laughs> pepperoni as an Italian thing oh my god yeah so pepperoni is um, American yeah but that, okay <laughs> yeah that's funny oh my gosh but yeah adoro la pizza è sul cibo preferito italiano ragazzi e gli piace la crosta sottile so yep thin crust is the way to go that is yes it's the best in Italy Um, okay, are you a flipper or a twister? What do you like better, like doubling or twisting? Oh my gosh, no, I'm a flipper. I'm yeah. Like, okay, I'm t the reason why, like, I'm not bad at twisting, but like, it's funny because like taller gymnasts usually are like better at twisting, just because like it's harder to rotate when you're taller, like two flips. Right. But for some reason, when I twist, I go so crooked, and so like <laughs> when I would do like a two and a half twist, I would just like end up so crooked, and I like cannot control it. That's so funny. You just so I'm, yeah, I don't know why. Like I would think I'd be going straight and I'd land. I'd be like, why am I not in the corner? So that's funny. Uh, but you still I'm better do at double twist flipping. a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in college, I did like a one and a half front layout. But yeah. if I like twist more, I would go go really crooked. That's funny. Allora, io chiesto se preferisce a saltare tipo fare i doppi salti, per esempio, o a vitare. E dice che sicuramente preferisce fare i doppi perché quando inizia a vitare va super sorta e non sa come, anche se fa comunque l'una e mezzo teso un esercizio in corpo libero, preferisce assolutamente a non avitare. Um, that's hilarious. So, this summer, do you think you're going to be doing camps? Have you thought about that? I mean, hopefully, I, I still want to work camps. Like, I've enjoyed doing it every summer and helping and inspiring kids, but... I'm not sure, like, hopefully the situation gets better with um, the, the virus and the pandemic, just because I know I want to 
commit to working games, but I just don't know, like, if a lot of them are either going to be canceled or, um, right. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see still going on. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Cause we had a lot of fun last year. Yeah, I know. I love, I love working, um, the camps and it's fun meeting different coaches. Like yeah. You. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. It was so fun. That was so fun last year. It was awesome to get everyone's, um, perspective on certain things in the gym and um, hear everyone's background stories and and just getting to know everyone and yeah it, it was, it was a lot yeah of I never was, like, like growing up I never went to any camps but like from the coach's perspective I think it's really um cool to just like learn gymnastics through the perspective and through the eyes of different people and just see how they approach the sport differently I think is really cool um yeah. it helps people grow it is, and it's interesting to learn different techniques and ways yeah. to build technique and just opens your mind a lot. Mm-hmm. And to meet all the little girls, and it's yeah. awesome to do that too. Um, io ho chiesto se farà altre collegiali come abbiamo fatto l'anno scorso insieme e ha detto che spero di sì, ovviamente se risolve tutto questo, spero di sì, perché adora uh, conoscere altri allenatori e capire altri diversi punti di vista e conoscere le ragazze e pensa che per vedere... Um, la ginnastica dagli occhi da altri allenatori è molto interessante per lei capire um, cosa pensano diversi modi per gli alimenti come costruire gli alimenti e um, che spera di fare altri ok so last question for you um, last year at camp this one's something that I wanted really wanted you to highlight and talk about because I think it's really important for gymnasts and non-gymnasts. Um, last year at camp, you talked to the girls about having confidence and that being one of the most important things, one, something that you really uh, value in mm-hmm. gymnastics and, and, and in life. Um, do you mind talking a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think just like whenever you're doing any sort of task, um, whether it's sports related, school, um, your personal life, I think it's really important to just be confident in yourself and I think um especially like living in today's times it's really easy to like go on social media and read comments and um have that doubt creep in your mind but I think um just having that positive self-talk um and just instilling that in yourself really helps you achieve whatever you're trying to do um in a positive manner beautiful um ho chiesto a Kyla una cosa che lei ha parlato di l'anno scorso durante il collegiale che abbiamo fatto e una cosa che ha parlato di davanti alle ragazze era l'importanza di avere autostima e dice adesso non solo nella palestra ma anche a scuola o nella vita personale quanto è importante avere autostima e credere in se stesso um, per lei dice che affrontando qualsiasi cosa sai a volte è difficile specialmente con social social media e instagram a volte entrano dei dubbi di noi stessi in testa ed è importante a sempre ricordare di essere convinti in chi siamo i nostri valori e andare avanti con un'autostima positiva parlare a se stesso in un modo positivo che questo è, è molto importante Beautiful, Kyla. You're such a beautiful person in and out, and uh, you're such a leader. Um, you know, we have a lot of littles here, too. So some are even, like, seven, eight years old and are discovering who you are today and, and um, have yesterday, too. And I think that it's so awesome that you are still able to speak out about your gymnastics experience and speak to the gymnastics community, um, even the new littles, someone to look up to as not only a gymnast, but also as a person. And um, I just want to thank you for all your positivity that you share. And you're just such a hard worker. And, and um, just thanks for being you. Yes, thanks for having me on and, and letting me um, reach out to your fans and the fans in Italy. Um, I think it's really awesome that everyone's really still staying connected through this was to be in their homes and um especially some not not even practicing gymnastics so i think it's really yeah. cool to still be able to have some positivity um during this time through people like you sharing or ha- helping me share my story through your fans i love that well thank you so much and um i hope that i'll see you soon either in california or 
camp somewhere or maybe Italy, who knows? Yeah, I know. I hope hopefully most of the camps um maybe they'll be just be pushed back a little bit, but hopefully they're still able to um happen this summer. Yeah, absolutely. Just cross your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well you stay safe, stay healthy and um we will be following you. Yes, thanks. You too. Okay. Thanks. Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>